Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 347. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions, uh, or I should say the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's a Google product expert uh, um, on the Google My Business uh, community. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of uh, London. Uh, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's a, a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. He's based in Wimbledon, uh, a suburb of London. And uh, David Razam is based in West Sussex. Uh, he uh, is um, a, a, a leading internet marketer. Uh, he's um, um, sort of to the left of Brighton, at the bottom of uh, England. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's right. All right, let's um, move on. Um, we have, what's wrong, David? I said that sounds like me. I, I would. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your effort. And you can catch up with David at davidrosam.com. All right, let's um, have a look. We're, we're just getting back into the swing of things. We have 10 questions. Um, number one uh, on our run list, uh, uh, it's um, titled SEO for a non.com domain. Ben Williams asked, uh, I read about top level domains and most articles were talking about .com as one of the best top level domains to get for SEO if you want to rank high on the search engines. This leaves me confused. What about if I have a client with a, a .tk? Um, will I still be able to rank uh, his or her uh, site um, uh, above competitors with a .com? Um, yeah, uh, most certainly, um, it's, it's yeah. no problem, um, because, and I'm assuming most of your stuff is related to, uh, talk, or I don't even know how to pronounce TK, what's that, Tokalao, Tokilao, anyway, um, I'm assuming most of your stuff is, um, you know, in, in, in New Zealand or thereabouts, um, and, and you shouldn't have a problem. Um, the one thing I would say is that if you were sort of maybe on a more global level uh, in terms of if it was an e-com and you, I don't know, you yeah. the thing is even if you were an e-com, I'm assuming you would be selling specific products made in New Zealand or, or in the particular island territory that you're in, um, it could, kind of could still make sense because if people were searching for a specific product from that area, then fine. Yeah, so look, the, the top line is not a, not, not a problem. Um, um, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. But I'm guessing in some instances, um, and you know, without knowing what kind of business or site it is, um, I would maybe say, yeah, you know, it might be better um, transferring to dot com. Um, but apart from that, no, you know, they, they, they work the same as as any other domain. Um, it all depends on you know, what you put on it, how you manage it, how you brand it, and how you build it. I think some people use .tk because it's free. Ah, so if he's not in that actual location, um, 
and, and I still don't know how to pronounce it, to Kalau, <laughs> um, in New Zealand. Well, well, it's not New Zealand, actually. It's a New Zealand territory. Um, if you aren't actually there, I'm going to say, and you're based somewhere else, whether you're based in the States or somewhere in Europe or somewhere completely other than that area, I would probably say switch it. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I think we can call that an answer, guys. Yeah. Let's um, move on to number two on our run list. This one from Neil Cheeseman. It's titled Big Global, Global Wildcard Redirect. Um, Neil said, uh, advice, please. A subdomain that was propagated by a supplier with several hundred uh, URLs. That service has now been terminated. Uh, many of these URLs will be indexed in Google, etc. Um, while the root of the subdomain has been set to redirect, what to do with the rest of the URLs? Uh, let Google uh, crawl and find that they are 404 or set a global wildcard redirect. Not sure how to do that via uh, cPanel HT access, I guess. Ah, David's back. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I have no idea how you would redirect that. <laughs> so I can't really help you. Thanks, Tim. Um, hello, Michael Martin has uh, said, and um, I think that would be the answer. I think in this scenario, I would set everything to... Uh, no index. It doesn't sound like there would be appropriate uh, alternative content to redirect to. Okay, let's move on to the next. Number three on our run list uh, is uh, titled HTML to WordPress. Can I change the URL structure? That's from Craig Anthony. Yeah, Craig said that when transferring a site from HTML to WordPress, when the old site did not have a service page or an about us page, should I transfer the old 140 pages to WordPress and then go live and once live, then add the services? Or should I add a service page um, while I'm making the new site now? It's my belief that a safe transfer to, is to swap as is and not change any structure. Um, all help is appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, you can change the structure at any time. Um, so, like, for example, it had the date in it, like it was, you know, uh, domain forward slash 2019, you know, uh, XYZ um, forward slash, and then the name of the article. Um, if you switch that um, structure in your, um, I think it's in the general settings, or uh, I'm just trying to think. Uh, but yeah, if you switch that to just sort of the top, you know, just the name, or you could want to include a category into it, or if you were segmenting it by, I don't know, uh, different types of locations or something, and you were segmenting it by different locations, or normally when you switch in the settings, it actually redirects the old to the new on what it was. Um, it normally does you will you will have to double check that but no it's it's not it's not a problem excellent thank you tim all right uh, let's um, move forward to number four on our run list tonight uh, from paul sphinx 
It's titled Basic and Clear Resource for SEO for Beginners. Um, I, I saw um, all of the answers uh, on our community uh, to, for this one. Um, and the, the one thing that struck me was that nobody mentioned uh, our, our Facebook group. Uh, they're answering in our Facebook group. Um, but, uh, you know, they mentioned Moz and all the rest of it, but um, nobody actually mentioned our, our, our group itself, which I, I thought was solid. Um, okay, so uh, um, Paul Spinks asked, uh, does anyone know of a good, basic, clear resource for SEO for beginners? Uh, thank you. So there's, yeah, I mean, like literally there's a ton of stuff out there. Uh, Moz does a whole big thing. Um, Google does the even own one, but that's more of a PDF, I think it is. You can just search for it. Uh, you know, it's a good overall explainer, but Moz does a more basic, like a more structured one. Um, SEMrush now on their site actually does, uh, so apart from articles, I think SEMrush actually does different modules. Um, so, you know, depending on what you wanted to do, like uh, if it was keyword research or, um, you, you know, like link building or things like that, they actually do so, um uh, I was just about to say tutorials, it's not tutorials, it's a, uh, uh, anyway, you know, so check out SEMrush on that. Um, and then also I would probably look at, you know, depending on what more in terms of SEO, are you, are you a local business? Are you trying to get into it as a career? You know, then I would also probably look at, um, following some following some 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 uh, you know uh, blogs out there uh, mine one my one's a pretty good start that's online ownership <laughs> um, you know uh, there's, there's a lot out there uh, and also you know country based specific also so for example if like you know if you want to get into more sort of technical stuff there's a good one out in Australia, Dijan um, SEO, but I think that's changed to DijanMarketing.com now. Um, if you want to keep up with a le le like gossip, uh, not necessarily gossip, but any up-to-date, day-by-day changes, there's Search Engine, uh, Search Engine World, there's Search Engine Journal. You know, there's 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 a ton of stuff. Um, but yeah, Moz has a resource, SEMrush, uh, for different articles and tutorials and basic like beginner like sections and also more in depth. Um, Google itself has a PDF and then follow, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, depending on what you want to do, you know, to keep in touch with things, you know, and d different different sites and blogs out there. And not to forget onlineownership.com. No, you definitely don't want to forget <laughs> onlineownership.com. <laughs> okay, okay. Because onlineownership.com really, really can help you in the local SEO market. Yeah, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. All right, uh, so we're... Um, Almost halfway through for tonight, guys. Uh, we're on to number five on our run list. It's from Scott Clark. Um, he wants to know is same as schema useful beyond just social profiles? Um, in other words, could it help with sending knowledge graph single signals to Google for say uh, a large brand with uh, multiple websites? Uh, on their own domains. Mm, okay. I don't think it is based on um, 
based on trial and error on different things. Um, if I wanted to sculpt a knowledge panel a bit more, I would rather look at going direct to the source uh, of the information and editing it there. Um, but, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, based on my own little trial and error, no, I haven't. Uh, other people may say differently. My own trial and error, no, um, not really. I would stick to social profiles or um, specifically related to that business or brand, um, whether it be, for example, their wiki page or, um, you know, their, if they've, you know, they, their company's house page or things related specifically to that, but not necessarily cross domain or cross brand or different name. Um, but there may be some other better format within a uh, schema for that. Thank you, Tim. Well, I think we'll call that one a wrap for this one. Okay, this one from Ralph Watson, it's number six on our run list. Uh, Geo tagging my photos for Google My Business uh, is the title. Uh, Ralph said, hi guys, can someone educate me a little on geo tagging my photos for Google My Business? I read a couple of days ago something about Google stripping out the geo tags. Uh, how do I make sure that this doesn't happen? And what is the best tool to use for geotagging uh, your images in the first place? And uh, any other good practices I should be applying when geotagging my images? So GMB was stripping those out forever and a day ago. It's not just some recent thing. Um, so your best thing, the, the only thing you can essentially do, because you can't do anything else, uh, even, uh, within the new GMB, the old GMB, when it was attached and linked with um, G+, you could actually add a description to the image. But you can do nothing of the sort now. So that your best way there is... Um, oh, sorry. Uh, that's cool. It that must have been Tim, Tim, Tim on the phone. All right. Um, well, as um, uh, Tim said, I'll just add, uh, add in uh, what he said on the Dumb um, SEO Questions Facebook group uh, through the week. Uh, he said that Googlebot does uh, strip out uh, geotagging uh, in uh, uh, Google My Business, so don't waste time adding. Make sure that the file name when adding an image is descriptive. Um, this is used more to understand the image. Um, Tim also said, he said, I would also not bother advertising. Um, I would also not bother, not bother wasting time geotagging images for the website. Many tests have shown that it, it, it uh, does not work but make sure your structured data um, either has geolocation or has map. All right, uh, any uh, further comments on this one before we move on? Okay, moving on to number seven. It's from Terry Slander Zander. Um, Sorry about that. That's quite all right, Tim. No worries. Um, question seven, removing the meta post date and author. Uh, Terry said, hello everyone, I hope all is well. I am new here and I have my first dumb SEO question. Uh, does removing the meta post date and author from a blog post on a WordPress website affect the SEO? So 
So, well, the first thing is your definition of SEO, like affect the SEO. <laughs> um, I, I, I would say, yeah, you can remove the author of it. However, there's a lot of people going on now about eat and author this and author that and look, but I'm, I'm guessing, I'm assuming it's just one uh, business um, that's writing this as such. So in that instance, I could just uh, yeah, get rid of the author. The date, however, I think you should always leave a published date in. Um, specifically, well, even actually if you remove that in your WordPress, it would probably still actually be in your header anyway of your site, uh, of that page. So even by you thinking you remove it, uh, even your header tag will still um, display when it was published. So even if you think you're removing it, you're not removing it. Um, so, but I would still certainly leave a date in. Uh, if you go and update it, you, you know, you can put a footer. This was updated X, Y, and Z because of certain things. It's good for the user to follow, uh, when things were updated. Um, and if you think by removing it, you're creating evergreen content, you're not, if you're going to create evergreen content, it shouldn't be in a blog anyway. You should be putting it within to the category or the site as a guide or things like that as evergreen. Um, so author, yes. Date, no, I would leave date in. Excellent, Tim. Okay. Um, any other comments on this one? Okay, we're number eight on our run list from Paul Spinks. How long does it take before keywords are recognized? That's the title that he's, he asked, uh, he said, uh, hello everyone. Uh, once I have added keywords to my site while trying to improve SEO, uh, does anyone know how long it takes before keywords are recognized? Mm, uh, so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, also, is there a way of checking to see what keywords are already on an existing site? Thank you. Sorry about that, Tim. Um, well, like, so I'm guessing you're saying well, I made some changes to my my page. How do how well, how long before something's recognised? Well, Google's going to recrawl that page. You can always check when it was last cached and indexed your Google search console will also tell you when it was last revisited <coughs> and you can obviously get it to, f but a keyword is not going to, you know, like just because it found a page with, you know, five extra things shoved into it is not going to, you're not going to see like a jump. It, ne it ne Google needs to go through the whole sort of process or of putting that into index when somebody searches it, how do, when they search it, where, what's doing this, who's referencing what, who's talking about what, is this site, you know, uh, knowledgeable in this, am I safe to serve this site to this kind of search query customer, blah, blah, blah. It's, yeah, it's not just showing a keyword and is it going to work, um, sorry to say. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tools out there that you can show in a domain and it will tell you basically where they're ranking for specific keywords. Um, I use SEMrush, you can use Ahrefs, um, depending if you're local, there's Bright Local, there's yeah, there's a ton of them. There's just a ton of tools out there you can shove in a domain. Um, but yeah, thinking you're gonna put some keywords on a page and uh, when Googlebot recrawls, you're gonna see a change, you're not unfortunately. Cool, thank you, Tim. And anybody else? Okay, number nine. Oh no, uh, that's it. Um, I, I thought we had ten tonight, but uh, no. It's thank you for watching time. Uh, um, we must be catching up on um, what were the questions that are, that are asked. Um, okay. Well, uh, look, I, I, I must thank um, 
all of the people like Michael Stricker and um, uh, gee, um, what's wrong with my brain? Um, uh, dear me, uh, can't think of his name. What's wrong with me? Michael Martinez, um, Brenda Michelin, um, yeah, I can't think of his name. But anyway, uh, look, the, the people like Michael Stricker, Michael Martinez, who answer questions uh, throughout the week, uh, we, we really appreciate it. Um, and uh, it makes our dumb SEO questions uh, Facebook group uh, so much, uh, well, so useful. And of course, our panelists uh, tonight, uh, who turn up every week and, and answer the uh, a roundup of, of the, the questions that we've been asked through the week, um, uh, which we record and place on uh, our uh, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> YouTube group. Oh dear me. All right, um, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do uh, this all again. Um, but uh, until then, um, it's good night. And uh, thank you uh, very much.